Hello, I'm Dennis Rillo Howell. I'm the founder of SiteGridge, and this is my presentation for this conference. This is actually based on my proposal for my PhD research project. The full title of my research propo proposal is Promoting Resilience Through Mental Health Blogging Basis for a Blog Based Psychoeducation Intervention Among Filipino Students. So, my Research aims to explore the efficacy of promoting resilience through mental health blogging. The fundamental aim of this proposal is to address suicidal behavior among Filipino adolescents. This is hinged on previous findings that resilience can improve anxiety and depressive symptoms, which are linked to suicidal behavior. Writing therapy has been known to to confer a range of psychological benefits, including the promotion of resilience. And this is based on my previous research where I did a, a research about expressive writing to promote psychological well-being among adolescents. And then a new type of writing therapy has emerged. It's called mental health blogging. And the reason why I said that it's a new type of writing therapy is because um, before the internet, we've, we've been doing um, writing therapy. We've been um, expressing our sentiments and our emotions through keeping a journal or through writing a poem. But with the advent of the internet, the same act is being publicized. We put that on blogs, we put that on social media. So it's kind of a new writing therapy, but on a modern platform. Now, I think as part of my introduction, it's also appropriate that I tell you about my background. So basically, I ran a website called SiteGreg, um, www.sitegreg.org. And before launching SiteGreg in 2014, um, writing has always been part of my lifestyle. I've always kept a journal since I was, uh, since I was nine years old. And to this date, I still have my journal. So writing has really been, has really played a significant role in my life. And so when I had the opportunity to explore this um, during my MSc, I really wanted to do, um, to do a research which, which explores the efficacy of writing therapy as an intervention in order to improve psychological well-being. And for my research project, I was trying to find out whether writing therapy could be used to improve um, perceptions of body image. And then, so it's essentially this research proposal for my PhD is an extension of that, is, that, is, that, is an extension of my project during my MSc. Now, I'll just give you a bit of a background because uh, for my research proposal, I, um, I'm not focusing on body image anymore and focusing on suicidal behavior. So I'll just give you a bit of a snapshot of um, what I found from the past literature. So 46% of suicide cases in the Philippines are from individuals aged 10 to 35. Male suicide increased from 0.23 to 3.59 per 100,000 between 1984 and 2005. And then female suicide increased from 0.12 to 1.09 per 100,000 between 1984 and 2005. In the UK, people die of suicide at 10.1 per 100,000. Although it seems that cases in the Philippines is relatively um, less serious compared to developing country. Um, the overall rate in Philippines is 3.7 per 100,000. If you're going to compare that to other developing countries such as Syria, the case is 3.2 per 100,000. And then Algeria, 3.1, Indonesia, 3.0, Guatemala, 2.7, and then Pakistan at 2.5. So you can see that um, um, the, the case in Philippines is slightly higher in comparison to um, countries which has relatively the same economic status. Now, as a result of this, most of most of the um, cases in relation to suicidal to suicide intervention is predominantly focused on 
um, developed countries. However, um, th there seems to be a problem with this because um, according to literature, lifetime prevalence of suicidal ideation and suicide attempt in ASEAN countries was 11.7 and 2.4% respectively. ASEAN countries is an organization of Southeast Asian nations. And the data from many developing countries is lacking. And then according to a research carried out in 2014, adolescents in developing countries need tailored suicide interventions. So what's the theoretical framework of my research? Um, anxiety and depressive symptoms are associated with suicidal behavior. Resilience is predictive of anxiety and depressive symptoms. Research suggests that resilience acts as a protective factor in developing anxiety and depressive symptoms. Now, what do I mean by resilience? Resilience is our ability to bounce back, it's our ability to flourish and to thrive after a traumatic life event. Um, say, for instance, a pandemic or death in the family or loss of employment, and we're still able to bounce back. So that's what I mean by resilience. So to illustrate this, um, resilience, your level of resilience is linked to you express um, having anxiety and depressive symptoms, which in turn influences your suicidal behavior. So let's say you have higher level of resilience, you're less likely to suffer from anxiety and depressive symptoms, and you're less likely to have suicidal behavior. So the idea is that we can, if we can improve the resilience, therefore we can prevent suicidal behavior. And so my chosen intervention would be blogging. And th the reason why I chose that is because I've been blogging for over 16 years now. I started blogging um, as a personal blogger. Where, when I say personal blogger, basically I just express myself um, my opinions, because when I was on my 20s, I was quite political, so I, exp I expressed that through blogs. But later on, I moved into running a travel blog, um, because later on, um, still when I was on my 20s, I, I was a solo traveler. I go to different countries in Southeast Asia on my own, and I kind of chronicle my experiences, giving tips and um, sharing my experiences to other travelers. And then in, in 2013, I came here in the UK to do a research project. So I decided to transform my travel blog into a mental health blog. So that's how I ended up creating my platform, Psychridge. So, um, but I, like what I've said earlier, I've always been interested about, you know, the efficacy of writing therapy as an introduct as a as an intervention. Now, to give you a bit of a background about writing therapy, um, here are some literatures that I found out. Um, in 1965, Ira Progrov um, pioneered journal therapy. And then later on, it was popularized by James Penny Baker in the 1980s, and it's called expressive writing. And then um, with the advent of the internet, of course, we no longer, we tend not to keep our writing anymore public, although of course some people still do that. And we, as I've mentioned earlier, we keep it on, um, we publish it on blogs, we publish it on social media. So, um, and it, it has also been found out that mental health blogs can offer psychological support. And also it has been found out that adolescents are unlikely to seek professional help and often resort to mental health blogs. So my research proposal, to the best of my knowledge, um, blogging has never been used to address suicidal behavior. I have five aims for my research proposal. First is to identify how adolescents conceptualize resilience to suicidal behavior, investigate anxiety and depressive symptoms among adolescents, and then to explore how adolescents perceive and consume mental health blogs. And then I also would like to provide a framework for developing a blog-based psychoeducation intervention. And then ultimately, I want to assess the efficacy of blog-based psychoeducation education intervention in relation to suicidal behavior among adolescents. And I will carry out four 
stages for my study. The first one will involve a qualitative interview study. Um, and then later on, I will have a focus group study. And then out of those, um, out of those um, first two studies that I've carried out, I will refine I will refine my proposed blood-based psychoeducation intervention. And then finally, I will trial out my proposed psychoeducation intervention. So for my qualitative interview, uh, the, the first stage of the study, I will invite 30 participants. Um, they will be proposedly sampled. All interviews will be tape recorded and transcribed for analysis. I will use MUX QTA and then data will be analyzed using thematic analysis. And then for the next stage, uh, my participants will be brief on the blood-based psychoeducation intervention, which was pioneered by Bonil and Nissim. I will inform them of the findings from the study, and then I will inform them of my proposed blood-based psychoeducation intervention. And then um, out of those first two stages, I will refine my proposed intervention. So a survey will be administered to further refine the proposed blood-based intervention. A total of 10 participants will be invited to participate in interviews and then their responses similar to the earlier stages of the study. Um, it will also be analyzed using thematic analysis. And finally, um, I will trial out a blood-based psychoeducation intervention that we find proposed intervention will be trialed from a different cohort of university students. It will follow Bonil, Nesim and Barak's work, which was done in 2013. And then results will be investigated, whether participants maintaining blogs significantly improve on all measures. And then a follow-up evaluation will also be in place. Now, I will be using three instruments. The first one would be adolescent resilient resilience questionnaire. It has a good re reliability of 0.89. And then to assess the levels of depression and anxiety, I will use the DAS21. And then finally, I will use a self-made social activities checklist. And this is what my self-made activities check checklist will contain. Um, I will ask them whether they see friends um, on a weekly basis whether, you know, how, how often do they see friends? And then do they call their friends? Um, do they do volunteer work? Um, are they involved in educational trips? Do they go out with family? Basically, it's just to assess the level of interaction. So um, I have three implications that I have in mind for my research proposal. First is that I want to pioneer a blood-based psychoeducation intervention to address suicidal behavior and then build upon previous works on ways to promote resilience among adolescents. And then I want to form a comparative work for future research on blood-based intervention. Yeah. So in a nutshell, um, this, these are the key takeaway of my research proposal. We know based from previous literature that adolescents consume mental health plugs. So can we actually use mental health plugging as an effective intervention for suicidal behavior? Again, this is still a, a proposal and I would be delighted to collaborate with any parties who's interested. And of course, as soon as I already have the data um, for my research, then I'll be glad to share it to you in the future. And um, you can always get in touch with me. My website is displayed on the screen. And um, thanks for listening.